Darkness is not an affirmative force. It simply reoccupies the space vacated by the light. This is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. It should be uncomfortable for a believer to live as a hypocrite. Delivering people out of the bondage of mainstream media and the philosophies of this world. God has called you and me to be his ambassadors. Even in this dark moment, let's not miss our moment. And now, the Hamilton Corner. In August of 2022, uh, the journal Science published an article uh, with a group of uh, doctors from Johns Hopkins University, Dr. Peter Juskik, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, another doctor, uh, Robin Chapman, and they were saying that a child's vocabulary is radically, voluminously developing from guess what age? At, at what age would you say children are learning words and word meanings? You might think three or four years old, two years old. Eight months old. Johns Hopkins University says that children as young as eight months old are capable of hearing and remembering words, uh, good, bad, and months later uh, they're able to recognize these words. And Dr. Peter Juskik, and again, if I'm mispronouncing his name, I apologize, but he says we are learning that from Eight months old, quote, little ears are listening. Well, this is Alex McFarlane welcoming you to the American Family Radio Network. I'm very honored to be sitting in on the Hamilton Corner for attorney, pastor, and cultural commentator Abe Hamilton. And I, I've got a great appreciation for this opportunity to be on the program whenever he's traveling. And if you recognize my voice, it's probably because of a show called Exploring the Word. I have the privilege of doing Exploring the Word live five days a week. We're now in our 14th year of Exploring the Word, and we give God the glory. But um, AFR is so good to me because, as, as you may know, I write and teach and speak a lot on biblical worldview. And I love to talk with young people about biblical worldview and the gospel, because uh, our goal Yes, uh, fulfilling the Great Commission and seeing young people come to Christ and be born again. But our goal, we want to help save our nation. And I've got with me a colleague that I'm so thrilled for everybody to meet. His name is Dave Glander, and Dave and I have been uh, very close colleagues in ministry for, I don't know, 15 years plus at least, maybe knocking on the door of 20 years. And we're doing a series of camps all summer long, and I want to talk about young people and how influenced they are for good or bad. I mean, they can be influenced uh, in a bad way with a fallen world, but please know this, folks. Be encouraged. Young people respond enthusiastically to the gospel message and to biblical worldview, and what uh, Dave has been doing for years, what he and I do together in our ministry collaborations is we're talking to young people about truth about God and country, and we've had a, a series of successful camps all summer long. We're going to have many more camps next summer, and just a lot going on. So be encouraged, because truth exists, truth matters, and young people, just like these babies learning vocabulary words at eight months old, let me tell you, teenagers, they enthusiastically respond to truth when it's presented, as Dave Glander so wonderfully does. But he's with us now. Dave, thanks for holding, and thanks for making some time to join us on the American Family Radio Network. Uh, thank you for having me, Alex. It's always a, an honor to, to, to share what God is doing with you, brother. Well, God is good, and uh, you know, you and I, uh, a week ago this time, we were in Indiana, and um, I have the privilege, I come in, I kind of parachute in and get airlifted out. You're the one that does the hard work. I mean, you and your staff put all these camps together, but we, um, and we, we share a lot of the, the logistical work to make these things happen. But um, tell us a little bit about how you got the vision for the Equip Camps, and I'm just, I, I want to be on record, Dave, as saying how honored I am to work with you and partner with you, and uh, I, I really feel like what God has us doing together with you, a ministry called Reasons for Hope, I want people to be aware of, and then, of course, all that uh, God's allowed me to do, I think we're just getting started. 
But lay out for people what is an equip camp and how did God lead you to develop this? So it's it's really quite simple. It, it goes back to when my son was, I guess, you know, young, 10, 12, 13. I'm, I'm trying to think back. Let's see if he's 26 now. He was 16 when I started to quit. Yeah, because it's our 10th year. And so, yeah, he was, he was a young teenager going to camps, Alex. And, um, and, and I'm not, and I'm not trying to talk down to any camps that are out there. If it, it, anybody putting effort forth in this generation, I applaud them and, and I Amen. thank them for their, Amen. for their hard work and diligence and, and what they're doing for this next generation. However, what I was noticing was not just with my son, his friends and, and, you know, kids from the church that we were at at the time, they would go to, camp and and they would come home and we call it that three-day jesus high you know they were just high on jesus for three days after camp man i mean they couldn't stop talking about camp couldn't stop talking about jesus and then on the fourth day it was like they had never even gone and yeah i just couldn't figure out said, why is this like why is this fire not not burning you know more passionately and what i came to realize is that it was all about an experience there wasn't really a whole lot of meat there wasn't a whole lot of tools or, you know, and so I started thinking, I thought, okay, how can we, how can we do this where it's like, I don't want to rob them of the experience. I think it's important that that kids get the full camp experience where they've got, you know, and when I look for a campground to, to start at, what I'm looking for is what are things that they can do at camp that they can't do at home? Meaning like they can't usually zip line unless they got like a wicked cool parent who built a zip line at their house. They can't zip line rock wall, giant swing uh most people don't have a gaga pit even at their at their at their church um there's just certain elements you know the the pool is important there's certain elements a lot of them have a a lake with canoes and and paddle boats and stuff like that um things that they can't necessarily do at home i want them to have that experience at camp i want them to sit around a campfire and roast s'mores and sing kumbaya you know i want them to have the full camp experience so that was kind of the start to it. I didn't want to rob them. But here's the thing. While I've got them, while we've got them, I want to teach them why they believe what they believe. Because I've been Amen. saying for years, and Alex, I know you as, as well say the same thing. If you don't know why you believe what you believe, your what can be useless. Especially as mm. kids go from, from going through, through, through middle and high school up into adulting. If they don't know why they believe what we've been teaching them, by the time they, they go into adulting, their what doesn't really stand. It's not substantiated. So Equip was designed to be an apologetics youth camp where they come, they get the whole camp experience, but at the same time, we're sitting them down um, three times during the day for apologetic messages, one time at night for a, um, for a more, more evangelical. And what we're doing is during the day, we're teaching them, the, the, we're discipling them, we're hitting them in the mind. You know, we're, we're, we're yeah. tackling the tough questions. We're, we're tackling the issues that are in front of them. We're giving them evidences as to why these things are supported, um, both scripturally, historically, um, physically, philosophically, geologically, you know, going through all the different methods. But then at night, we hit them with more of a, now what do we do with this? You know, because you can, you can have all the head knowledge in the world, but if it doesn't connect to the heart, and I think that, Alex, is really what makes Equip work so well, is it's the twofold. It's threefold. It's one, they get the experience. We don't want to rob them. Two, we're hitting them in the mind. We're giving them the why behind their what. And at night, we're threefold. We're hitting them right in the heart, saying, here's why this matters. And so when you connect yeah. all three of those elements together, it's, it's, it's really a game changer. It really is. Well, it, it is. And, you know, anybody who's raised children or worked with children and young people know that they ask why. And, it, you know, it's interesting, uh, you know, no, we can't go to the amusement park today. Kids, well, why? Uh, no, we can't, you know, do this or that. Maybe we can later, but we can't right now. And kids will say, why? I have found kids, I mean, if, if, if you have a decent why, they'll they'll embrace the what. And when it comes to God, the Bible, Jesus, and with teenagers nowadays, goodness, you know, why is homosexuality wrong? Uh, why does the church say that, you know, transgenderism is wrong? And we get these kind of questions. We, who are adult leaders, and we're trying to pass the gospel on to the upcoming generation, we need to be able to um, effectively, calmly, 
with truth, but yes, with grace. We need to be able to tell the why. And what I've found in 30 years of ministry, and Dave, I know you would concur, is kids, they, they, they get it. I really don't think kids are against God and biblical truth, but they, they just need it explained. And, of course, there's prayer and the spiritual dynamics of, of any ministry. But, folks, if you're just tuning in, Alex McFarland here, my guest, Dave Glander of Reasons for Hope. Uh, we work together on the Equip summer camps where we have hundreds of youth across America. And we've got, as we record this program, we're in the middle of our camps. We've got a lot more camps coming up. But, Dave, um, when you see enthusiastic young people like you and I saw last week in Indiana, and they were like, thank you, Mr. McFarlane, I feel like I've really grown in my ability to study the Bible for myself. Or, thanks, Mr. McFarlane, I know what I'm going to be able to say to my Jewish friend about Jesus when I go back to school this fall. I mean, the way they respond, the, the visible life change, and just the the deep commitment that a 15-year-old makes to the Lord, it, it's worth it all. Doesn't that just charge your engine, Dave, when you see, I mean, you can just see in their expression, they have had an encounter with Jesus, and, and they, they're committed because we gave them a why for their what questions. Um, exactly. It's worth it, isn't it? You know, so one of the things that's kind of become a, a, a newer tradition for us is um, towards the end of camp. I think this, this uh, we did it Thursday night, I believe, um, this, this past week in Indiana, where what we do is we ask the leaders, you know, all the, all the leader, whether it's a youth pastor or um, a volunteer, an adult volunteer, but we, we ask them to, to, to come up where we're leading worship from because um, you can hear the kids singing, but when you when you're standing up front and all their voices are projected towards you, inevitably they just break that the, the youth leaders break down in tears because man, you can hear how passionate these kids are about their faith in God. And when those youth, you know, we as the worship team, because my my daughter in law, my son, and myself um, lead worship for for the equip camp, we get that blessing every time that that we that we lead them in worship. And 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 so we call the leaders up there to see. And I and I tell them, I say, don't you don't you find so much hope in what you just experienced by hearing these youth just pour their hearts out and worship towards our heavenly father. And I say, there's, there's hope. Like we don't, we don't have to, to look at the stats and look around and, and go, Oh my goodness, I guess we've just lost. There is so much hope that I see Alex and, and these kids. But, but again, I think it's because we're giving them the why to the what if, mm -hmm. if it was just another camp, that would just kind of fall on deaf ears, but because we're giving them the why to their what, let, let me read you something that Frank just shared this morning, um, and I think it's going to kind of um, put kind of a bow on, on the sentiment we're trying to say here. And um, he says, I just got this email from someone who was at camp, uh, this last Equip camp. He said, hey, Frank, this is Xander from Equip camp. I was just emailing you to ask for the lesson notes from your sermons, right, because um, Frank can send him a PDF version of that. He said, I also wanted to let you know that the lessons you and your team put together this year are life-changing for me. They opened mm. my eyes and showed me that our God is more than just some God. I really appreciate everything you did for us, and I look forward to coming back next year. And that's what it's all about, Alex, is like he said, look, every lesson that was shared was life-changing for me. It, it opened my eyes. Like I didn't, I didn't realize I could have a substantiated faith, but now that you've shown me I can, all of a sudden, this whole entire concept of who God is has just opened wide up to me. And and, and I'm reminded yeah. of, of three weeks ago, we were in Georgia, and Carl was talking about something. Carl Kirby, he was talking from, from, from he was talking about something. Alex, it was time to cut them loose to go to the zip line and the giant swing. And Carl was running up on, on his time limit, you know, because we try and stay very sensitive to that to make sure, again, that the kids are getting the experience as well. And he goes, hey, hold oh, that thought, man. I Forgive me. We've got time. a break. Uh, Dave, speaking yeah, of time limits, we've got a break. Folks, hang on. We're going to continue with Dave Glander. You're going to be so excited to hear about young people coming to faith in Christ, and they respond like 2 Peter 1.16. We have not followed cleverly devised fables. The gospel is not a myth or a legend or a fairy tale. It's real. It's authentic. And when young people are shown 
the content of the message and the evidence that proves it, they respond. Stay tuned. Alex McFarland here. More on the American Family Radio Network with Dave Glander when we come back. Don't go away. Some guy who claims to be a girl is not science. I'm sorry. You no, did, it's not. You just can't claim to be something that you're not. No, we don't allow people to choose their ethnicity. No. Or yeah. their age. No, I can't say I'm, you know, I'm an Eskimo, so provide me with a free igloo. We yeah. don't let people do that. We don't. You're a male, and you can't claim to be a female, because you're not. Today's Issues, weekday mornings at 11 Eastern and 10 Central on American Family Radio. Sadly, as believers, we can be pretty self-centered and selfish about our prayers, praying for I, me, mine. The Lord taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. It says, our Father, not just simply my Father, but our Father. We need to pray much daily for each other and pray with one another as well. That's so, so very important for each and every one of us. Tune in to the Hour of Intercession, weekdays at 3 a.m. Central on American Family Radio. As Christians, we cannot redefine marriages because ours do not turn out according to God's standard. We have to aim for the mark. And the mark, it's not happily ever after. This is a picture of Christ in the church. So God has invited us as two individuals becoming one Mm -hmm. to be a living billboard of what he did for us. Mm. Airing the Addisons, weekday afternoons at 2 Central on American Family Radio. Shining light into the darkness, this is the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. You know, our first president, George Washington, a quote attributed to George Washington is this. Now listen, he said, the future of this country depends on the Christian training of young people. Welcome back. Alex McFarland here along with Dave Glander of the Equip Camps that I'm very honored to be a part of. Uh, The ministry that I lead, Truth for New Generation, we've been promoting it. I've been speaking. And uh, the the website, by the way, is equipretreat.org. And um, as as we're doing this program, you know, we're in the middle of summer 2023, um, and I don't know, I'm going to be in Iowa, by the way, I'm going to be at the the Bible conference there in Iowa in the first part of August, and um, Cedar Rapids Bible, or Dave, is it Cedar Falls Bible Conference? Cedar Cedar Falls Bible Conference, this is their 103rd year. It's amazing, and the way that I got there, I flew into Cedar Rapids, Iowa, just a few short miles away, the the Cedar Falls Bible Conference. They've been going for a century. It's amazing, and they've had John MacArthur and Erwin Lutzer and major leaders. I'm very honored. This is the first week of August that I'll be the, the keynote speaker this year. It's really an honor, and I would encourage you to be there. But my point is, even if our youth camps... Uh, our touring schedule this summer, maybe if it's a little late for you to get on board, there is going to be, good Lord willing, summer of 2024. And the website, equipretreat.org, um, you want to do whatever you can do to get your students under the sound of biblical worldview teaching. Dave and I, and Carl Kirby, and the staff, Frank Figueroa, I don't know if you've ever heard that name, he is just one of my f- favorite speakers now in youth apologetics, but we talk about God exists. We talk about truth exists, ultimate absolute truth. The Bible, the Bible is the Word of God. We talk about creation versus evolution. And then the moral dominoes that fall, if you believe in evolution and you you rule out God as the Creator, then we help kids understand that, look, what you lose if you if you eliminate God the Creator, you also lose morals and ethical boundaries. And we help kids understand that part of the reason the world is where it is is because for 150 years plus, Darwinian evolution and then moral relativism and then things like socialist economics, uh, all of these, these very destructive trends have come into our life because we've turned from the God of the Bible, and we can, we can not only personally be saved, but we can make a difference. 
and we can help restore uh, a lost world as we get back to a biblical world view. And Dave, uh, I want to commend you. I'm honored to work with you and partner with you. But um, seeing, seeing middle school and high schoolers enthusiastically want to embrace Jesus, that makes it worth it all. Now, before the break, you were talking about Carl Kirby. The kids, uh, I think your, your point was going to be that uh, the zip lines and the games were waiting, but they wanted to sit and hear more truth from Carl Kirby, didn't they? He was like, man, I, I'm running out of time. I wish I had more time. And all the entire room, all almost simultaneously, was like, keep going, keep going. And and that's what that's what I wish that um, parents and grandparents and youth pastors, pastors would understand is that these kids are starving, Alex. And when you give them truth that they can navigate their their faith through, they're starving. Instead of going to the zip line or the the giant swing, they were like, "No, let's keep talking." And and keep in mind, each session is an hour. We're not doing yeah. fifteen minute sessions. Each session yeah. is an hour. So they've already been sitting there for an hour listening to the teaching. And when the hour is up, and they get the chance to go and do a a, a, a real cool activity, they're like, "No, we'll cut into our activity time to keep this going." It's 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 an amazing thing that that we're seeing. I mean, it absolutely. It, reinforces why we're doing what we're doing, Alex. It's because these kids are starving. And, and when and when they get a taste of it, they want more. Yeah, they do. Let me encourage everybody listening. Look, if you are involved in, in a local church, and I pray that you are, uh, maybe you're involved in Sunday school, and we're, Dave Glander and I here, we're talking a lot about youth and young people. But let me say, I think you need to do biblical worldview teaching if you're leading the seniors, if you're leading the, the children. And Dave, one of my prayers is, because you think about this, uh, they, they say roughly there are like 345,000 churches in America. And I know that's from the little church that runs 50 people to the mega churches. You know, I spoke in Cummings, Georgia a couple of years ago for a church that had 7,500 people on Sunday morning. But look, rural, urban, small church, big church, every church. Dave, if 345,000 churches started really getting their people of all ages confident in what they believe, you know, bold, and really zealously excited about what it means to be a child of the King, if 345,000 churches got a hundred and Barna estimates 120 million Americans are Christians, a third of the country, uh, and not just nominal, but solidly born again. 30% of Americans probably do have a, a, a thriving relationship with Jesus. Dave, if, if 120 million people were on fire for Christ and willing to present, explain, and defend the truth— I think it would the world would look different really, really quickly, don't you? I, let me let me let me give you another example because I, I love these these personal testimony examples because to me that's that's what puts rubber under our under our tires when we're going. Um, and, and this was after the uh, equip in Georgia, and and she wrote to me and she said, "Hi, Dave. My son Jonathan went to equip with our church over the summer, and he has been so on fire with sharing and growing in his faith." He and some friends he met at camp handed out a bunch of Jesus Saves bracelets at the Mall of Georgia yesterday. They got to share the gospel with a lady who was Jehovah's Witness, who was genuinely interested in asking questions and was so impacted by seeing young people share their faith and know what they believe. They gave her a bracelet Amen. info to our church as well as the Reasons for Hope app. That's what it's about, Alex. We gave them the tools that they needed. And when they went home, it didn't die after three days. They're out at the Mall of Georgia handing out bracelets saying, Jesus saves, and they're witnessing to the gospel of Jesus. And that's what we try and tell them. It's like, you're going to run into people that Alex and I will never get to see. So it's yeah. important that you guys pick up the Great Commission and run with it. And we're seeing that happen. I'm telling you, Equip is it's a game changer. It, it, it's because of the format, because of – and it's not just the format. It's the heart in which everybody, you included, Alex, those kids know that you care about them. Those kids know that, that you have their best interest in mind, which is why you're there sharing. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, the heart of what Equip is, the format of what Equip is, is why we're getting these testimonies afterwards about these kids 
that are that are still on fire. And after ten years, I've seen kids come through Equip. But three of them are are serving in, in Equip ministry. We, Alyssa, Gabrielle, and, and Ace, not including my son. That would be four of them are part of the Equip staff who goes out and does this. They were all once teenagers in camp, and now they're mm-hmm. serving because of the impact that it made. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, folks, the website equipretreat.org is where you can find out information about current and future Equip camps. Uh, and Dave, I, I want to go over some questions that are just so precious. Um, and by the way, uh, Bert Harper and I, uh, two years ago, we released a book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers, from the first 10 years of Exploring the Word. Volume 2 of that is releasing in the fall of this year 100 more Bible Questions and Answers for families. And these are actual questions from radio listeners. I've got hundreds of actual questions from our camp attendees, too. But um, you can find those at afastore.net. Hey, by the way, Dave, I know you and Carl at Reasons for Hope and Juan Valdez, a, a, another beloved colleague of 20 years, you've, you've released several question books, too, haven't you? We have. We, um, we take the questions that the kids have written to us, and um, our team seeks to to give biblical answers to those questions, as well as I believe in our our next edition coming up. You you've written a couple of the uh, answers in there, haven't you? I think I have for yeah. our next book that's about to release. And, and <laughs> Alex, you ooh, do so much writing, you can't even remember which one you wrote for. But yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty sure you you've actually because <laughs> what we're doing is we're trying to expand the horizon with who's answering these questions. So we're going um, a lot of them are within our team that that's with reasons for hope. But then we're kind of expanding out to experts that are that are in those fields. Like I think Jason Lyle's writing one on astrophysics for us and stuff like that. So that way we're getting you know expert opinions on there. But yeah, you can in, any of that you can find at our web, website rfrh.com. It's just short for Reasons for Hope. Reasons for Hope. And uh, look, folks, I know uh, you've heard us mention Carl Kirby. I don't know if you know Carl or not. Uh, Amazing. One of the, maybe the greatest creation versus evolution speaker that I've ever heard. Dave, you're available. Let, Let me encourage you folks. One of the ways you can begin to get your church involved in apologetics, and again, apologetics is not apologizing. But it's to speak in defense of something. And 1 Peter 3.15 really tells us as Christians, be ready always to give an answer to everyone who asks a reason for the hope that you have. If somebody said, you know, why should I be a Christian? Or why do Christians think that they're right? Uh, Why do you think Jesus is the one and only way to get to heaven? Being able to explain what the gospel is and explain why, yes, Jesus is the one and only way to get to heaven. That's apologetics. It's not apologizing. But the word apologetics appears in the New Testament about a half a dozen times. Probably the most famous is uh, 1 Peter 3.15, but it means to speak in defense. And uh, let me encourage you, you could book Dave Glander to come to your church, or Carl, or myself. Uh, You could begin to teach a lesson on apologetics. You could, on Sunday mornings, Tell the, the youth, and this will draw a crowd. Might might take a few weeks to get the ball rolling, but say, look, here's what we're going to do in Sunday school, kids. Bring your toughest questions, and then we'll discuss, and we'll land on a biblical answer. Dave, uh, kids can be reached for Christ, and I just pray that each and every church would, would believe that and would want to tool up and structure things so as to reach young people. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that, that I'll, I'll make short and sweet is we, we've got um, what we're doing is equip rallies, which are a Friday night and Saturday from like nine to five. And yeah. it's basically a um, a taste of what a full week of equip would look like. And then on Sunday, um, one of the requirements that we have, and, and I'm sure we'll need to go to break before we can fully unpack this, but we've realized that... Um, we don't get to the parents. A lot of what we're doing falls on deaf ears by the time they get home if it's not reinforced. And so we do an equip rally where it's Friday night, Saturday is about the youth. Sunday morning we have a um, a parent seminar where we talk about how to effectively parent in this time of of crisis is really where we're at. I mean, it's just so many different worldviews being thrown at these kids. 
how do we navigate those worldviews? How do we navigate um, iPhones that are that are that are teaching our kids? You know, how do we how do we navigate through that? So I would love to encourage people reach out to us at Reasons for Hope and let's schedule an equip rally. It's like I said, it's not as much of a commitment as going to a full week of equip, but what it does is it gives you an idea of what a full week equip looks like. And I think once you get a taste of what that looks like, you're going to want to be involved with the full week. Mm. Well, I- indeed, indeed. And folks, you know, like I say, I've known these guys for 20 years. They've known me. We we are very busy on an individual basis. We love to work together collectively. Uh, Dave, we've done 49 of the uh, Truth for a New Generation conferences. And just this morning, I heard from a, a lady that went to one of our conferences 10 years ago, and she she wrote to us to tell us how her life was never the same. And so, look, truth is transformative. It really is. Dave, I want to go over some of these questions that the kids asked last week in Indiana, and I know that um, okay. by, the t- by the time this program is airing, you and I will be on the road to South Carolina, but this yeah. just shows you how kids think, folks. They, they really are thinking. A, a child wrote this question, did God create evil? After all, he created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So does that mean that God created evil? Okay, there's there's a response to that. What a deep question from a teenager. Yeah, the very deep question. Um, somebody, and by the way, I can always tell the questions written by little boys and the questions written by little girls. Little girls have really good penmanship, generally. And little boys, it looks like, you know... <laughs> hieroglyphics on the wall of a cave. Well, well, some, sometimes little girls draw little pictures to go with their, their stuff, too. <laughs> exactly. So here's a question. I know it was written by a little boy, I'm sure, because it's not very legible, but why did God create cuss words? Isn't that something? Hmm. Um, a, yeah. a child wrote this, uh, and I think this is a girl because it's, it's very nicely written. It says, I don't drink, do drugs, sleep around bully people, or swear. So why do I really need Jesus? My behavior is fine. See, now yeah. that's that's works righteousness. Even a child. Well, and, or, and, and we were we were talking earlier today, I, I think I I was the one who answered that question, and I made it real simple. I called up another young lady who, because I recognized the handwriting as being a young lady, and so I called another young lady up there. I, I don't know who wrote the question, because we tell them not to put their name on there so that way they'll really ask the hard-hitting questions sure sure now they're not embarrassed to ask but i just called the young lady up there i said you look really sweet and innocent and she kind of we all chuckle a little bit you know i said have you ever told a lie what does that make you a liar i did the ray comfort kind of are you a good yeah, person sure, test sure. And, and i said have you ever taken anything even a pencil on a, another kid's death that didn't want well, uh-huh what does that make you a thief have you ever taken the name of the lord in vain what does that make you a blasphemer i said So according to your own admission, not me, I didn't say this about you, you said this about you, you're a lying, blasphemous thief, should God allow you into heaven? And she's like, well, of course not. I said, but you didn't bully anybody, you didn't sleep around, you were generally a good person, but there was still sin in your life. So it's a a really cool time when we do those Q&As to give some pretty simple yet profound answers to those questions that they're asking. Mm. Well, we've got a break, folks. More with Dave Glander. We're going to go to some questions and answer some of these things. But look, the vision, the vision to pass the faith on, it must be in all of our lives. Stay tuned. We've got a moral uh, illness going on in America, a departure from biblical wisdom and godly leadership. As Christians, we're called to make investments in other people that they can eventually develop, mature, and do the same thing to others. Join Walker Wildman and Rick Green as they tackle today's issues from a biblical and a constitutional perspective. At the Core, 1 p.m. Central, weekdays on American Family Radio and on the podcast page at AFR.net. There's only four things that we can do with money. Live, give, owe, and grow. There's three key categories that are indicators of financial health. Our housing, our car, and our food. What that comes down to is competing priorities for our income. For more biblical wisdom on financial stewardship, listen to Faith and Finance with Rob West, weekdays at 9 a.m. Central. How does our use of God's resources truly reflect what's most important to us? Isaiah says we shall 
Beat our swords into plowshares and our spears into pruning hooks, and nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall we study war anymore. And I believe that day is definitely coming, that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, will bring us prosperity, harmony, but that's not the world we live in yet. Tune in to The Awakening, weekdays at noon central on American Family Radio. The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and one-minute commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to The Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Alex McFarland here sitting in for Abe Hamilton on the Hamilton Corner. This is the American Family Radio Network. We're talking with our friend Dave Glander. We're kind of midway through our summer youth apologetics camps, and I want to resume that conversation here in a moment. But I just want to say a big thank you to all who came to The Cove. Last week I was at the Billy Graham Training Center, and I'll be there, by the way, next summer, 24, I'll be there in July next year as well. But we had... Uh, 260 people from 25 states. Uh, it, it was just amazing, and the vast majority of people were AFR listeners. It was we had an incredible time of prayer on Saturday night. I was teaching through First and Second Peter, but I just want to say a big thank you. No doubt, many listening were among those that, um, as I've been on tour all this year speaking, you come out, I was in California, I was in Florida, in Texas, in the Upper Northeast. I want to say with all my heart, thank you. The people that travel, and you come to the Billy Graham Center every time I'm there, and I want to say God is igniting a movement. And it's important that it's in all ages, especially young people. That's what Dave Glander and I do together. We try to uh, equip and inspire and inform and mobilize young people. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. But for all of you, wherever you are, and you're standing strong, and you're making a difference, and you're praying, and you're using your gifts and abilities, just remember this, folks. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And Dave Glander, my friend and my guest right now, Dave, isn't it exciting? Because look, social media is bigger than any of us. We've The world is wired up, the internet, uh, there's wokeism. There's everything from the World Economic Forum to the World Health Organization, and it seems like the planet is just aligning itself against God and truth, and yet the Lord promised to his church, uh, he says in Matthew 6, 8, I know what you need even before you ask. In 1 Corinthians 15, 58, he says, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Dave, isn't that a great encouragement that um, (laughs) even though the church versus the world, it's a David and Goliath proposition, but we come in the name of the God of hosts who gives us the victory. That's encouraging, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Like I said, man, when I do these equipped camps, you see it with your own two eyes. I'm encouraged by the generation coming up, man. I, I, they're they they are they are strong, they're smart, and when you give them the proper tools and understanding, I, I believe um, I, I believe there's a lot of hope in this generation coming up. I really I really do. And there are there are future church leaders and political leaders, Alex. So it's important that we take time to to make sure that they've got the um, the information needed. You know, that you, you can, my son says all the time, and it's not his saying by any means, but he, he's stuck on that saying, you can lead a, a horse to the water, but you can't force him to drink. You know, there's some kids who, who come through equipped that, you know, you try as best as you can to, to get them to navigate the, the truth of their faith. And they just, for whatever reason, they, they just refuse to pick it up. But I would say the majority of them, I mean, the strong majority of them are, are, Asking the right questions, they're they're listening intently, and they're applying what they're learning. And 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 for me, for my two cents, that is that is inspiring. I, I get, oh, it is. I get juiced up. That's, people ask me how I how I stay so on fire for God. I'm like, man, hang around youth and teach the youth, and they'll keep you young because man, they're they're on fire, man. They really are. Well, just the 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 content of all these questions, and this is just from last week, but it shows these kids are really thinking. So uh, a child writes, "If heaven is eternal, will it get boring? What will we do in heaven?" 
Uh, here, here's a piece of paper. It just says, what about aliens? Kids want to know about what, yeah. what aliens are. Um, I, I love this because we've gotten a variation of this question many times. How did God get invented? Now, kids often yeah. ask this, and, and, and I wrote uh, for the Apologetic Study Bible for Students that LifeWay published a couple of years ago. Um, if, here's how the question very often gets asked. If God made everything... Who made God? And of course, the answer. Well, well, let me ask you. How do you how do you respond to that one, Dave? The the question. You know, if God made everything, who made God? How do you explain that one to a young person? Well, I mean, it's it's for me. My my go to is just breaking down the Kalam cosmological argument in its most simple sense yeah. that anything that begins to exist must have had a cause. Meaning, you began to exist. The phone we're talking on began to exist. All these things had a beginning, so there must have been a cause. Whereas, step outside of the Christian faith, every faith in God, one of the attributes of God is that he always was. That's, that's part of the attributes of, of the God of any faith, for that matter, that God always was. There was no beginning and no end to God, and, and now flip back to the Judean Christian faith, and God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So he, he doesn't have a beginning, he is the beginner. And so you go back to that simple argument that just says anything that begins to exist must have had a cause. Since God did not begin to exist, there is no need for him to have a cause. And so he is the uncaused cause, is, is the, the most simple answer to that question. Yeah. You know, I was very fortunate when I was at Liberty, um, uh, J.P. Moreland was one of the professors there at, at that time. He's been at Biola for a lot of years. And he taught the Kalam argument. That's K A L A M. You mentioned the Kalam uh, cosmological argument. And uh, Kalam, you know, interestingly, the word Kalam really means discourse or thought. In other words, this is kind of reasoning about if God exists, what would we know about God? And there's a lot more we could bring out of that. But the two guys that are probably most associated with it, J.P., Dr. J.P. Moreland, but then also William Lane Craig. But this is just logical. Like you say, if everything has a cause, uh, there has to be something that is not dependent on anything outside itself, and that, that's God. Nothing caused God. God is the cause, but, but there was no cause for the causer. Um, yeah, but, he's uh, the uncaused cause. And exactly, the uncaused cause. And, and by the way, here, here's another application of that line of reasoning. How do we know God is personal? Because one of the teens at our camp last week asked basically that. How do we know God is personal? Look, God must be personal because he created persons. You and I are personal. We, you can know us. So if God is impersonal, then he's less developed than we are. So, so God must be a, a personal God because he created persons. But here's my point, Dave. Uh, we don't water it down. You know, if, if a, a child no. asks a question that requires some philosophy and logic to answer, well, we, we get philosophical and, and logical. And I want well, to encourage and, you. And that, that cosmological argument, it, there's been books, you know, 300-page books written about it. So the argument is actually a really in-depth argument, and what we try yeah. to do as best as we can is give them the, um, the Cliff Notes version of it, and, or, and, and here's why. And then what we do is we say, look, if, if you need more unpacking on that, if that didn't quite make sense, you don't even have to ask a question. Just throw your hand in the air, and I'm going to realize that you need a little more explanation on that because we want to make sure that we're giving them as much of a solid answer as we can but the reason why we try and go kind of a cliff notes version, Alex, when I put that question box out and I say, hey, throw your questions in here, it gets loaded up. And so in oh, order yeah. to make sure that we're trying to hit every question, we can't spend 20-minute answers. You know what I mean? Because I'm telling you, when you give kids the opportunity to ask questions, especially with anonymity, they load right. that box up. It's amazing how curious they are and how many questions and, and the depth of their questions that they have – but I also think that's part of the game-changing process is you don't have to guess what they're thinking now. When you put that out in front of them, they're telling you, here's my hang-up. 
did God create evil? Because if God created evil, then I'm not sure I can get behind this God figure. You know, that's their hang-up. So we get right. to address, you know, exactly what they're thinking, what their stumbling block might be in that process. Yeah, and here's a question. This is from a teenager. I'm holding it up here uh, on camera on the video component because um, we also did a camp this summer in uh, Colorado, had 19 kids accept Christ in Colorado about two and a half weeks ago. Then, Dave, last week you and I were in Indiana, and uh, I know from the kids that I personally talked with, and we we gave them one of the New Believers booklets that I wrote, um, I know... 10 and probably more like 12 kids accepted Christ last week. But um, how do well, I and there, was, and there was over 20 of them at the Georgia camp not too long ago. Praise God. Praise God. Not to mention the, the, the kids that came to the camp already as a born-again believer but got strengthened. But it says, um, how do I avoid a negative mindset? Uh, so many times I feel depressed. Dave, you gave, and you know what? I'd never heard it before. You gave one of the most incredible messages on fighting depression. Because, look, God, science, the Bible, the manuscripts, archaeology, fulfill prophecy, we do a lot of that kind of apologetics, and that is good, uh, and we love it. But you gave a message on victory over depression through Jesus. I think a lot of uh, we grown-ups, we don't realize, I mean, Middle schoolers very often deal with stressors that in previous generations an, an innocent child would have never known the, the pressure that middle schoolers feel like they're under now. And so here's a child ask, you know, how do you deal with, how do you combat depression and a negative mindset? Um, I'm glad we have the answer, but Dave, it kind of, in a way, it, it, a little bit, um, you know, it, it's rather poignant that that a a teenager would be asking how to overcome stress and depression well alex you were you were sitting in the room when during that talk on depression i i have them write down on a piece of paper again with no name just what are some of the things that that you've been told or or called that haunt you when you look in the mirror like when how do you how do you see yourself and i have them walk it up and and drop it in a box, you know, and, and as I'm going through the, the, the rest of the talk, I'll, I'll take a piece of paper out and read what they wrote. And Alex, you were sitting there. It, it, those tears that I was crying when I was reading those, those aren't, that's not emotional, you know, some sort of emotional plea. I'm, I'm literally, my heart breaks that an 11 year old, a 14, 16, 18 year old is really saying things like, you know, you're ugly, you're fat, you're, you're useless. There's no point to your life. You should just die. Your family hates you. Nobody likes you. Like these are the things that, that they're writing down. I, I put that talk together, Alex, because the top three things that we get, and I, and I know, you know, I'm telling the truth. When we put these uh, anonymous question boxes out, what do I do with LGBTQ? That's one of the top three. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Suicide is, is one of the top three. And, and depression and anxiety combined together round out the top three. Those are the top LGBTQ suicide, anxiety, and depression are the number one, number two, and number three things that we get everywhere. I, I could be at a homeschool Christian conference where you would think none of this stuff would be touching them, and it's still the question they're asking. You know, well, listen to this, and folks, let's not forget we are in a spiritual battle. Here is a question from, uh, I don't know the age of the person who wrote this, but this, from one of our summer camps. Uh, and Dave, this might have been uh, the one in Colorado that you weren't at uh, with me. Angie and I did that one uh, without your staff. But it says, how do we respond to people who seek a medium for advice? In other words, going to a fortune teller. I mean, so look, that... Uh, hey, by the way, run. Uh, have no fellowship right, with the exactly. unfruitful works of darkness. But this is the thing. See, people in every generation are desperate for answers. Some go to secularism and they rule out God. Some go into substance abuse or, or alcohol or drugs. But here's uh, a young person asking about 
they apparently they must know somebody that's going to like a medium and oh my goodness what a dark demonic deception that is um one more question says um my nephew is questioning the existence of god so this must be one of the adult leaders his mother died and a grandparent died now he's wondering if god really exists it's very sad because that's a question that comes from a place of pain isn't it dave yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of the a lot of the questions come from a place of pain. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time. Dave, you're such a blessing. Looking forward to connecting with you on the road next week as we minister to more teens. Um, time fleets away. Give your website, uh, Dave, and where people can find you online. You can find our ministry reasons for hope at r f o r h dot com. Just short for reasons for Har- hope rforh.com and the equip camps is very simple equipretreat.org god bless you folks thanks for listening keep your radio tuned to the american family radio network keep us in prayer bless you